Racing was one for the books as our first W Racing Champion on the All-Star Challenge Tour, Zach Antizana, representing Team Mayhem in Max D, managed to grab the crown. Now we're heading into our freestyle competition fueled by W with one of the most stacked lineups of the season. Can Team Thunder catch up on points? This is the Rings of Rod semi-realistic points series. This is Monster Jam! Hello everybody and welcome back to the ROR SRPS channel. My name is Preston Vieira and we are back in MetLife Stadium, this time looking for our first W Freestyle Champion of the All-Star Challenge Tour. Racing was wild, we had a lot of close races, a lot of fierce competition, but heading into freestyle, this is truly anyone's game as far as champions are concerned. On this tour, it's not just about the champions, though it truly is a team battle for points as the winning team will get the only World Finals qualifying spots on the tour. Enough talk though, let's take a look at our last lineup and see who's coming out tonight. Shane Lake in that Gravedigger 35 truck is going to be followed by Rick Steffens in Blown Money, Cam McQueen in Bro Camino, followed by Cynthia Gautier in Lucas Stabilizer, Barry Musauer in Zombie, followed by Jake Cranford in Gravedigger 37, Jackson Schlett in Piece of Scrap, and Tyler Meninga in Hypershock. Kicking off the second half, we got Preston Perez in Monster Mutt, Rottweiler, Trevor Goldberg in Max D, Dave Reed in Northern Nightmare, and John Gordon in Bad Company, two Team Thunder, two Team Mayhem, same here. Bryce Kenny in Mohawk Warrior, Blue Thunder, Edward John Hyden, Devin Barber in Avenger, and closing us out, we got our racing champion, Zach Antizana in Max D with that split paint job. But coming out first for freestyle, we got Shane Lake, the dog father, in Gravedigger 35, representing Team Thunder. It looks like... We got a little bit of a body change. I don't know if they swapped it in the back or what. Two minutes on the clock. He's going huge to get us started. And he's going to need to go huge if he wants to make up those points for Team Thunder. Now, of course, everybody has to do well. You need a lot of your team to get up to the top of the leaderboard. It's not just solos. If only one person gets up to the top, you know, everybody else down at the bottom Team Mayhem is going to be <laughs> up at the top. You know, they're going to get all the big points. So it really is a team effort. Everybody has to go hard. Everybody has to fill these first 30 seconds like Shane Lake just did. And, uh, yeah, we'll see how he continues this run, if he can fill the clock. Another super important thing because our freestyle judges really don't like when you do not fill the clock. It hits your score big time here on the ROR SRPS channel. And uh, we've seen it a couple times this season already. And we're only two shows in, one for each of our other two tours. Shane Lake getting into a little bit of trouble there, going right into the wall, but he's coming around for the jammer. That is definitely a massive hit. Look at the air, and he didn't even hit it that hard. Shane Lake, 50 seconds left on the clock. Does need to turn up the dial a bit. He is going hard. But if he wants to stay up at the top of the leaderboard all night long, especially as the first truck to come out, he really needs to go big, which is going to push all the others to go bigger. And uh, it's, it's going to be a really tough competition. We already got our first backflip of the night here with Shane Lake. He's going for it. A little bit of under rotation, but manages to pull it back around. Wow. Nicely done. Kicking that truck all over the place here. Uh-oh. Oh, my goodness. What a save from Shane Lake going out in round one of racing. He has made it his mission, apparently, to come out here in freestyle and go hard. What a downside off of the cross thread. It is all kinds of buzzwords in this run, and it is working for Shane Lake. One more final hit, huge hit to go out, and that is going to be a 34.25 for Shane Lake in that Gravedigger truck. Look at the massive air. Hard hit on the rear end, and over he goes just for the fans. Manages to somehow get lucky and end up back on all four BKT tires. But what a run to kick off the night. Definitely some highlights in there. Be sure to stick around on the channel. We do have uh, brand new coming soon. We got highlights. 
So uh, I think we actually just posted our first one earlier this week. You can check that out for the Indie Madness Tour in Cameron, Texas. But here comes Rick Steffens in blown money, looking to turn up once again for Team Thunder. Let's get some points on the board, guys. Rick Steffens, nice little slap wheelie over the van stack to get us started. Does have to really hit, check on those brakes. And uh, a little hit there, a little hit. Um, definitely want to announce your presence on a tour like this where going big really counts. Um, not necessarily doing that here in our uh, second freestyle of the night. Excuse me. Sorry about that. <laughs> nice big hit there. Solid downside on that massive middle hill. But he's already down to those first 30 seconds. Look at the big hit here. Getting a little crooked. Trying to keep that truck on all four BKTs and keep the truck running. Keep this freestyle run running. Uh-oh, look at this. He's going to take on the launch ramp here. Oh, he's slowing down. <laughs> Definitely not the most hype run we're going to see all night, unfortunately. Uh, you really need to go big. He's hurting Team Thunder, playing it safe. I mean, filling the clock is important. You're going to get a bigger score filling the clock as opposed to if you don't. But if you're just playing it safe the entire time, I don't know how big of a score you're really going to get. Oh, yeah, look at that. Rick Steffens turning it up. An absolutely massive launch. On the reverse side, going small to large here, uh, you can definitely get into some trouble pulling it out like that. Nice slap wheelie down the track, getting down to these final 40 seconds. He definitely wants to turn it up, and now he's feeling like it's safe to do so without uh, hurting his score too much. Uh-oh, gets tripped up. Over he goes. They do shut him off, and over and into the crowd a little bit there. Messing up the railings in the stadium. 27.85 only for blown money. Rick Steffens, unfortunately, just not big enough when it counted and then uh, started to go big, and down he goes. Hopefully, uh, I don't know, hopefully he can turn up soon. If he's not the points loser tonight, this could end up being a really high-scoring show. Just got to wait and see what happens here. Bro Camino, Cam McQueen hitting the track. Two minutes on the clock. Nice cross thread, of course. Bro Camino, another one representing Team Thunder. Definitely going to have to go big, especially after uh, Blown Money kind of blew it there here in freestyle. Nice combo using the step up on that uh, little launch ramp. Solid, solid, nice save. Nice control, knows exactly where he's at. Knows he needs to settle it down, not go a little too hard and end up going over. Awesome little slap wheelie there. Does lose a bit of momentum. Taking on the pyramid. Definitely an interesting uh, set of obstacles we got here. A lot of cars, but uh, that pyramid of cars in the corner is uh, steep and very interesting. <laughs> very interesting. We saw Blown Money get into a little bit of trouble. Cam McQueen there, not into any trouble, but you got to be careful going the opposite direction over that. Uh, you don't want to end up on, or into, on the dumpster or into the crowd. <laughs> Ken McQueen throwing it into some donuts here in the corner. Trying to get it off of the wall there. We're going to get a cross thread here. Look at this. Nicely done. Not quite a downside, but a solid landing on that ramp. Over the van stack we go. Ken McQueen needs to turn up the dial. 40 seconds left. Huge hit off of the jammer. Look at that. Hard side slap. Can he get the save? Beautifully done. And settling it down before the wall. 30 seconds left. Can he turn it up anymore with a backflip? Yes, he can. Cam McQueen definitely not afraid of the backflips. We did see Cam do a reverse in real life at one of the world finals. I believe it was 14. So we'll see if uh, we might get that from Cam sometime this season. Down he goes with eight seconds left on the clock. Just gets into an awkward position with that backflip ramp. And look at that. A 28.65 because he didn't fill the clock. Eight seconds left. That's not much time. But if you don't fill the clock, that is going to hurt this season. Cynthia Gautier coming out next in Lucas Stabilizer. Now we saw her absolutely blow most of the trucks out of the water last season in uh, Indianapolis at Lucas Oil Stadium. We'll see if she can do that here in MetLife this season. Horn blaring, getting these fans hyped for her run. Uh, the only truck to come out on top of Cynthia last season in her one show uh, in freestyle was Gravedigger. So we'll see if she can uh, burn it down here tonight. We got two Gravediggers on the track. 
or in the field. So uh, we'll see how he, how she does here. Nice slap wheelie to get us started. Solid move. Another driver representing Team Thunder. She's going to come out here and try to burn it down, do her best to really let loose like she did in Indianapolis last season. This time she's a main field competitor, so she'll be sticking around as long as she's not the points loser, that is. Up and over the jammers there. Getting into a trouble, getting a little bit of a wild ride there, but comboing it up with a big hit. And one wheel down the track a little bit as we cross that 30-second mark. Cynthia definitely knows how to turn it up. Uh, you know, there's a lot of people that talk down on her driving style, but, man, she kills it here on the ROR SRPS channel. And uh, going wild definitely does not hurt your freestyle score. A little bit, uh, well, as long as you fill the clock, right? <laughs> Getting a little wild there on the landing, but uh, keeping things rolling. Is she going to go for a backflip here? No, she backs it up. She's going to go for the jammer. Absolutely massive sky wheelie from Cynthia Gautier getting into some trouble, though. And down she goes with 47 seconds left on the clock. That definitely hurts her and Team Thunder. It is a very unfortunate night here in freestyle for Team Thunder, and uh, it's just not the way you want to see these drivers go out, man. That is only going to be a 17.4 for Cynthia Gautier in that Lucas Stabilizer truck. Um, she's at the back of the pack right now. That definitely hurts. That hurts and that sucks. Zombie Bari Masaur coming out next, and you know just what to expect from this zombie machine. Coming out onto the track, sliding and uh, sliding around, nearly going into the wall there, right into our W banner. But he's just hyping up the fans here, getting them ready for what they're about to see. He went wild in freestyle and racing all season in season one. He's returning here once again for season two. I'm looking forward to what he's going to throw down. He's getting these fans hyped. A lot of fanfare from Zombie, always uh, turning up the fans and getting them ready for an insane run. I'm sure that's exactly what they're going to get. Bari Musaur in Zombie going over the van stack to get us started with a beautiful downside. Wow. Gravedigger Shane Lake, the dog father, waited until nearly the end of his run to throw that in. Bari's getting us started with it. That's what I'm talking about. When you go big early on in the night, it convinces everybody else to go big as well. And so you just get a wild show with uh, some pretty potentially high scores. Zombie, look at this stoppy on that massive hill. Now, of course, that is what that uh, little popper up on top is meant for, aside from to get some trucks in trouble. But, I mean, I wasn't sure we were going to see it. Nobody really attempted it so far tonight. Barry Musauer going cross thread there with some nice air up under those BKT tires. Sliding around, going right back for that center hill. Another huge hit for Bari. Whoa, look at that. Just misses that uh, reverse gear. I don't know if he missed it or if he just wasn't going for it. But he is going to throw it into some donuts there. Did lose a little bit of momentum getting stopped before the wall there. You really want to get back on it as soon as possible if you can. Um, that's what leads me to believe that it might have been a, a, a missed gear there. Had to shuffle around to get that thing back into drive here. And an up and cross thread. Awkward hit there. A little bit of a side slap. 30 seconds left on the clock for Bari Masaur. How is he going to turn it up here in East Rutherford? A nice big hit over the jammer with a slap wheelie on the end of it. Or really more of a power wheelie. He kind of had that natural bounce to it, but uh, fought to keep that those front wheels up in the air. Look at that. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Can he get the save? Off of the nose. He can't. Bari Musaur in Zombie absolutely pulls out one of the, probably one of the most incredible saves we're going to see tonight. I mean, Gravedigger had a, Shane Lake had a pretty great one over the vans there. But, uh, I mean, rolling backwards and saving it off of the nose is incredible. Hard side slap there. Down he goes. Another save for Bari Musaur who ends his run with a 36.1. Wow, we have a new freestyle leader, Bari Musaur, with a 36.1 in that zombie truck representing Team Mayhem. Now, we transferred the lead from Team Thunder to Team Mayhem. Jake Cranford in Gravedigger coming out next. And uh, he's Team Mayhem as well. He doesn't need to turn it up as much 
uh, just because of, you know, Team Thunder being down at the bottom. But we'll see what he does. Of course, everybody wants everybody to turn up here uh, with every show. So I'm definitely, <laughs> I'm assuming he's going to go big. But just pointing out it's not 100% necessary with Team Thunder up at the top like that right now. Big hit there for Jay Cranford to get us started on that jammer. Kind of gets into, gets himself into a little bit of trouble, but manages to keep it safe and off of the sidewalls there. Another bit of an awkward side slap. Sidewalls right into the bus stack. Wow. Trying to pull out some skills moves here, some interesting combos. Needs to be careful. That could really get him into some trouble. Cross thread here that we haven't seen before. Nice big hit on the, uh, the step up there. And we're back on the sidewalls for Gravedigger. Down goes Jake, but he brings it around. What a save there from Jake Cranford in that Gravedigger truck. And uh, he's popping it up on the nose here on that little bridge between the two massive launch ramps. Nicely done. Walking it back on the moonwalk a little bit. Another cross thread here. Jake's having a solid run so far. We are about halfway done. We are halfway done with this freestyle run. We got a minute left on the clock. Does need to turn it up if he wants to grab the lead, but this is a solid run. I would love to see him just keep going how he's going. Look at the leap across the track from Jake Cranford. I want to see him just keep going how he's running and uh, burn out the clock. Get a full, full clock here, man. We haven't uh, gotten Zombie's the only one who's really filled the clock. And, uh, of course, uh, Shane Lake in the dog in the Gravedigger, I believe, right? So we'll see what happens here. Coming around, throwing it. Oh, I was going to say throwing it into some donuts, but he's going to go for the van stack. Nicely done. Up and over it. Just a nice little hit. He's going to go for a backflip. Beautifully done. Trying to get the moonwalk there, or at least just trying to get out of that situation quick. Nice big cross thread over the jammer. Kind of an awkward landing, but keeps it on all four BKTs. That's going to be a nice score for Team Mayhem. A 35.1. Taking second place. That is Team Mayhem. Zombie, Team Mayhem, Gravedigger, and Team Thunder, Gravedigger. Uh, that, is, that is the top three of our leaderboard right now. So both, wow. What a hit from Jake Cranford. And another skills move to close it out just for the fans. No scores here in the back end of this run. And he's going to back it out of the stadium. Wow. Next out on the track, Jackson Chalette in piece of scrap. Definitely, definitely hyped to see what he's going to bring out onto this track. This truck looks wild, man. It looks wild. And I'm sure he's going to come out here and drive it wild. Definitely a reputation for uh, burning it down. So we'll see how he does here in uh, East Rutherford, New Jersey. MetLife Stadium turning up for a piece of scrap. Jackson Chalet going over the car pyramid to get us started. Massive hit. And he's going to take on the other one as well. Nice big sky wheelie. Standing it straight up and down on top of those cars. Jackson Chalette here to burn it down for the fans and letting them know with his first three hits, a nice cross thread there over that massive van stack as well. First 30 seconds are just about done. It's looking like he's going to be getting a score here for his freestyle run. Nice hit here. Kind of an awkward landing, but combos it up. Gets into trouble with the save, though. Jackson Chalette is clear to go and keep this run going. Nice big hit over the bus. Wow. This run is uh, off to a solid start. We're, we still got half a run to go, and he's going to go big on the jammer. Look at the air from Jackson Chalet as he pops that left front. It does uh, reinflate. We do have, uh, you know, run flats here. <laughs> Spinning that truck around, going for the van stack once again. Solid hit. That was an incredible save down at the bottom of the track. We'll see if he can keep that running, keep that energy. He's going for a backflip. Beautifully done. Almost kind of walks the plank there, but uh, misses the gearing to pop that thing up even more. Solid landing there. Gets a little bit of a side slap. 30 seconds left on the clock for Jackson Chalette. Needs to turn it up even more if he wants to take the lead. Solid cross thread. 25 seconds. 
Going for the jammer once again. A big sky wheelie across the track. And pops it up onto the sidewalls. Down with another save. Jackson Shillette turning it up. He wants the lead here in East Rutherford. Can he get it? He's already had two saves at least. Uh, more than Zombie. So I don't know. We'll see. 1-0. Oh, running it right into the wall almost. 36.75 for Jackson Shillette in piece of scrap. He grabs the lead here in freestyle. But here's someone who uh, we all know could do it just as just as well. Tyler Meninga in hypershock coming out here to burn it down for the fans in East Rutherford, New Jersey. What is he going to do? to turn it up for Team Mayhem. And, uh, I mean, everybody wants to grab the lead. You want the championships. It's just a team battle as far as World Finals qualification. So everybody got to do good. But uh, whoever comes out on top comes out on top. You know, Tyler Meninga going for the stoppy. Look at the combo going over. Can he get the save? Yes. He starts out his freestyle run with an insane stoppy to save off the nose. And, uh, I mean, dude, <laughs> Tyler Meninga going huge with the massive cross thread as well. Taking on the van stack. 30 seconds are just about done, and we've had already one of the wildest runs we've seen tonight. Nice big hit there. Another cross thread somehow getting pointed right in the direction of that step up. And uh, kind of an awkward landing there. It does lose a little bit of momentum, at least for the run that we've been seeing so far with this Hypershock truck. Going up and over the car stack. Nicely done. Nice big hit. He's going for the backside of the car pyramid as well. Standing it straight up and down on top of it. That is a narrow window of error there. And manages to get it done beautifully. Oh, he's going in reverse over the van stack. Nice. Even getting, I mean, kind of a little bit of a, a slap moonwalk there. Awesome move. Trying to get... Uh, little bit of a bicycle. Ooh, hard side slap. Manages to somehow roll it back onto all four BKTs. Just got lucky there. And he's going to launch it. He's going to launch it. Absolutely huge. Beautiful downside. I mean, that is a huge hit. He didn't go as big as we saw a couple of the other trucks go tonight. But he, go he went just big enough to get a perfect downside, which we have not seen. Look at that. A hard hit on the front end. For Tyler Meninga in Hypershock trying to get the save. He gets it. Oh, my goodness. Team Mayhem is going insane here in show one. And we got, uh-oh. Yep, we got another save from Tyler Meninga. Can he keep it going to the end? He does. And that is a wild run with a score to back it up. A 36.9 for Tyler Meninga in Hypershock. And he gets another save just for good measure for the fans here in East Rutherford, New Jersey. MetLife Stadium going wild as we close out our first half. If you guys are enjoying the show, which how could you not with a run like that, be sure to subscribe and hit the like button. Let me know. It really helps out the channel. Also, be sure to hit, uh, be sure to go over to Instagram at RORSRPS and uh, follow that. We got all kinds of extra content. And uh, let's take a look at this leaderboard here, man. Hypershock, 36.9. Piece of Scrap, 36.75. Zombie, 36.1. And Gravedigger with that 35.1. And then uh, it just goes down from there, man. Gravedigger, Team Thunder. The only one on Team Thunder really to do well is uh, the Dogfather. But we got some more Team Thunder coming at you right now. Preston Perez, Monster Mutt Rottweiler representing Team Thunder. Can they burn it down tonight? And get the points that they need to end up on top. I mean, they're already down. When heading into this competition, it was 32 points for Team Thunder and 44 points for Team Mayhem. So Team Mayhem is already in the lead with points. Team Thunder, for the rest of the night, needs to go as hard as possible, as long as possible, to get as high of a score as possible in order to earn the scores, or the in order to earn the season points, excuse me, to end up on top by the end of the show. Interesting hit there from Preston Perez. Beautiful slap wheelie. He's going to combo it up. Look at that. Another sky wheelie on the back end of it and pops it right up onto. Oh! Nice save. 
What a save as we get down to this final minute and a half, burning through that first 30 seconds, and he will be getting a score for that incredible save off of one wheel. He might have damaged the, the nose a little bit, but I mean, he saved that truck from uh, getting some real damage and uh, gets into a little trouble here. He's back on the sidewalls once again, manages to set it down. One minute left on the clock. He's doing great. He's having some cool wow moments, but he needs to turn up the dial a lot in terms of momentum and just overall freestyle if he wants to come out on top or at least help Team Thunder uh, get, get some points on the board, man. Trying to go for a little bit of a stoppy there, fails. Uh, he's gonna have to really turn it up here. Getting down to these final 30 seconds. Nice hit here. Gonna spin it around, where is he gonna go? Looks like he's gonna go for a backflip. 30 seconds left on the clock. Nice, nicely done. Trying to get it up on the nose there, but he's just going for the reverse move route. Nicely done. Keeping it rolling, Preston Perez. 15 seconds left, can he turn it up? Nice big sky wheelie across that massive hill. About time for one last move. What is it gonna be? Cross thread, a little bit of a slap wheelie into the cars and gets it down on all fours. That's gonna be a 32.4 solid score. Does not top Gravedigger Shane Lake with that 34. So I mean, Solid run, some incredible moves in there, but just failed to really turn it up the way he needs to if he wanted to take the lead or at least surpass uh, Gravedigger, his fellow Team Thunder teammate, Trevor Goldberg, coming out next in Max D. Now, if there's a truck that can turn up the dial any more than we've seen so far tonight, it is a Max D truck, and he is going to go absolutely huge to get us started. Going right into the pyramid of cars right after. Definitely a, uh, uh, definitely announced his presence. I'll say that. And look at that. Real Max D move there. Going wild in the air. Real crooked uh, launch. He's going to take on the bus stack as we get down to our first 30 seconds. Solid hit. Beautiful nose wheelie. Can he walk it back? He does. We are past those first 30 seconds. He'll be getting a score. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Nicely done. A great save, and he's just going to keep burning it down in reverse. There we go. Back into drive. He's going to head for a cross thread up and over the bus stack. Another huge hit. Trevor Goldberg going big so far tonight. Needs to continue to turn up the dial if he wants to earn Team Thunder some real scores, some real season points looks like he's gonna launch it here solid does come up short of a downside which kind of makes me curious what he was really going for because you heard him not really go hard he didn't give it full throttle up and over that launch ramp it's a little bit of a slap wheelie but we know these max d trucks and drivers don't really mess with the slap wheelies too much look at the air over the container First one to get it. I forgot to mention, we do have some new obstacles on the track. He's the first one to hit it, and he goes absolutely huge on that container jump with a nice little uh, skills combo, I guess you could say there. Uh-oh, 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 on the sidewalls. Can he get another save? He does beautifully done in that Max D Nitro truck. T Trevor Goldberg turning it up. Can he continue to turn it up in these final couple seconds? Um, doesn't go out with a bang, but definitely... Fills the clock, and that is going to be a 33.2. Another one to not take the lead. Oh, my goodness. What a hit. D almost directly to the cab there with that Max D Nitro truck. Trevor Goldberg there, and definitely going to have to check on him, make sure he's good to go. Uh, but, <laughs> oh, man, what a hit. What a run leading up to that. Um, not enough to knock out Shane Lake as the Team Thunder leader. But heading into our next run of the night, it's Dave Reed in Northern Nightmare. What is he going to do to kick off this run? And how is he going to attempt to knock out Hypershock and Piece of Scrap? I mean, doesn't really need to. This is another one. He doesn't need to go super hard. He just needs to get a better score than we've seen from Team Thunder. 
Nicely done going for that jammer. Kind of an awkward couple of hits there. Just trying to get that truck back to solid ground. Gonna take on the car stack. Gonna combo it up. Look at that. Walking the wheelie over the bus. Dave Reed pulling out an interesting move there. 30 seconds down. He will be getting a score for this freestyle run. He needs to turn it up now that we are past those first 30 seconds. If he wants to at least try and get up in the top three or four. Nice hit there over just a simple set of cars. Getting some real air under those BKTs. Spinning it around. Uh-oh. A little bit of an awkward hit here. Does manage to get up and over it. Interesting cross threat. A minute left on the clock. Needs to turn up. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Nice save. Keeping it off the wall. That's nice. I was going to say he needs to, you know, turn up the uh, momentum a little bit. Really get into some wow moments that are going to really hype up the crowd. A nice backflip is going to add to that. But you need more. You need to really go hard if you want to come out on top. Team Mayhem is doing well, but I'd like to see Northern Nightmare do well. I'd like to see the individuals do well and then come together as a whole to grab a win. Sliding that truck around. 20 seconds left on the clock. He's going to go for the cross thread. Look at this. Over he goes. Can he get a save? Oh, just misses the window of contact with that back tire to throw it in reverse. That's only going to be a 23.65. Yeah. I mean, it makes sense. He had, some, he had a good run, decent momentum, but it was just slow. It was just kind of waiting for the next good hit. You know what I mean? And it... it Honestly, it never really came. John Gordon and Bad Company coming out next. We'll see if he can improve as far as Team Mayhem has been here in this second half so far. Wow. Already, uh-oh. I may have spoke too soon. Oh, no. He gets it. Wow. What an incredibly lucky save. I mean, they could have shut him off, but they gave him the opportunity to continue and bring that truck back around. On all four BKT tires. What a way to start a run. I don't think that's the way he wanted to start the run. But I mean it works. First 30 seconds are down. He'll be getting a score. Hopefully he can fill the clock and really burn it down. Unlike what we just saw from Dave Reed in that Northern Nightmare truck. Slipping and sliding around the track. Going big. Look at the air on that simple car stack. Absolutely launches it and he's coming around for the pyramid as well. Nice. No slap wheelie. Got kind of an awkward landing. Didn't set him up for it. A minute left on the clock. Halfway through this freestyle run. Losing a little bit of momentum. Getting in trouble with the wall there. Doesn't touch it. But really had to hit those brakes and get that truck stopped. Look at the big hit off of the cross thread jammer there. Bad Company John Gordon. Of course, we did see Bad Company in Season 2. He is back. But this is a different version of the truck. Beautiful downside there from launch ramp to launch ramp across the track. 30 seconds left. He's going to throw it into some donuts. Needs to turn it up, though. Needs to turn it up. It's a common theme with every run. But, I mean, if you're just going to go slow the entire time, I'm going to tell you, you need to turn it up. Beautiful stoppy here. 15 seconds on the clock. How is he going to differentiate himself from the rest of the pack and get high up on the leaderboard? Going slow over the jammer is exactly how he's going to do that. That's sarcasm. <laughs> that is it for his freestyle run. 33 seconds. I mean, 33 points. Whoa. 33.5. A hard hit on the left front. A little bit of the chassis. That is a dangerous hit for sure. Luckily, the run is over. He can head back to the pits without fear of uh, hurting his score at all. Decent. Decent. A 33.5. Mohawk Warrior Fire coming out next. Bryce Kenny, another Season 2 competitor that has uh, debuted in Season 1 as a main field competitor at that. He was on the Sponsor Showdown Tour all last season in this Mohawk Warrior fire truck. He's back in Season 2, looking to burn it down here on the All-Star Challenge Tour. Big sky wheelie over the container. Wow. Hard hit on the rear end, but he's going to keep this thing going. And we'll see what he can get into. Does have to reverse here to get it off of those containers by the wall, the barriers here. 
Keeping the, keeping the stadium and the crowd safe. Nice save on the rear end. And he's doing it. He's walking it out. Nicely done from Bryce Kenny in Mohawk Warrior Fire. 30 seconds done. He'll be getting a score after that incredibly lucky save. And he is just going to continue to burn it down. Where will he end up is the question because we know we've seen him win at least two freestyle titles. So he can burn it down, uh, and he will if he's just consistent and, you know, fills the clock. A minute down. Can he turn it up anymore? Nice big hit cross thread. A little bit of an awkward landing there, kind of a side slap. But keeps that truck in control. That's important. He's not in trouble. He's not, uh, you know, putting himself in any danger. Down he goes. Can he get a save off the sidewalls? No. No. Bryce Kenny down with over 30 seconds left on the clock. That's only going to be a 19.8. That puts him just above last, just above Cynthia Gauthier in that Lucas Stabilizer truck, which is very unfortunate. But here comes our racing runner-up, Edward John Hyden, in that Blue Thunder truck. Absolutely huge to get us started. What a hit from the racing runner-up. He didn't win in racing, so he wants to come out here in freestyle and take the win. And if he can even come close to the top spot, he will probably get the overall championship taking those 12 points in, uh, in racing. That is if Zach Antizana doesn't come here in freestyle and absolutely burn it down. First 30 seconds are done for EJ Hyden in that Blue Thunder truck. He's going to combo it up here. A little bit of an awkward hit. Oh, whoa. Big brake check puts him up onto the nose, and he's going to walk it back to the edge of the track. Beautifully done. Going right back for that jammer that he started out with. A lot smaller of a hit this time around, which is very unfortunate. I'm going to say it. Got to turn up the dial a little bit, guys. Half, halfway through this freestyle run, he has a long way to go. He can turn it up. Look at the big hit over the container and the slap wheelie. Nice. Uh-oh. Oh, reverse. No. Man. It is just not happening for some of these guys tonight, man. Team Thunder is hurting here in MetLife Stadium. That's only going to be a 16.5. That seals the deal. That is our final. Well, I shouldn't say seals the deal. That puts him below Lucas Stabilizer, his teammate, in points. So he is now at the bottom of the pack with that 16.5. But next out on the track, it's Devin Barber in Avenger. Someone you know is here to turn up. He went out in round two of racing, got himself four points on the board. But since he was the World Finals freestyle champion, he's here to turn it up at the back of the pack. And I mean... He was not only the World Finals Freestyle Champion, but look at the roof of that thing. He was also the Custom Chaos Tour Champion. as uh, like Overall, he took the season championship for uh, Custom Chaos Tour last season. Nice big hit across the track. Absolutely airs it out. Doesn't even touch the downside on the opposite launch ramp. And there's another absolutely massive hit from Devin Barber. He is turning up the dial, trying to make up a little bit of points at least for Team Thunder. Going big, it's, uh, hate to break it to you guys, but I can tell now Team Thunder did not burn it down like they needed to in order to come out on top and make up some points. So Team Mayhem looks like they're going to be taking the win here in uh, the freestyle competition, which puts them in the lead for the team battle here in, uh, in our first event of the season for uh, the All-Star Challenge Tour. Avenger, Devin Barber, a little all over the place there. Manages to get it down on all four BKTs. Nice big sky wheelie. Getting in trouble on one wheel for a second, but sets it down. One minute left on the clock for Devin Barber. He kind of hit a dead spot here. Needs to turn it up a little bit. Hard hit on the right front. What a save for Devin Barber in Avenger. Oh, my goodness. 50 seconds on the clock. He's going to take that pop tire right to the backflip ramp. Oh. And that's, what, that's exactly what hurt him. The pop tire kicked him off kind of crooked and hurt his flip. That's an 18.25. He is one of the back of the pack right now. And that hurts me as, <laughs> as a commentator, as a host, and as a friend to Dev, man. That is unfortunate. Definitely want to see him come out here and turn up 
uh, next time around. He is safe. He's not a point loser, but he does need to go hard uh, next time around to make up the points that he didn't earn this time around. Unfortunate for sure. Zach Antizana, our racing champion here in MetLife Stadium. He is here in that Max D split truck to turn it up for the fans, hyping them up. It looks like he has a big move in store for us. Two minutes on the clock. Absolutely huge. That is the absolute, that, that has to be the biggest air of the night tonight. And somehow he manages to pop it up onto the nose with control and uh, walk it back a little bit. That is an insane start to a freestyle run here in MetLife Stadium. He knows he is the final truck of the night. And if he's going to be the last truck, he's going to go big to close out the night. We are getting down to these first 30 seconds. So he will be getting a freestyle score. Absolutely huge, man. Zach is going wild. Not only does he take the racing championship, but it looks like he's going to be taking our W freestyle championship if this can continue. He needs to fill the clock. Same rules for him as everybody else needs to fill the clock. If he wants to get a win or a good enough score to potentially take the win. Whoa! What was that? Zach Antizana. And, I, don't, I don't even know what to say to that. Absolutely huge hit right after a save off the nose. Zach in this Max D truck is going insane here in MetLife Stadium. No real structure, but you don't need it. If you're going wild... <laughs> You're going wild, man. You, he is absolutely going insane. And a beautiful downside on the back or on the side of that uh, step up. And he's going to cross thread it again. Look at the huge air. Zach is dead set on this freestyle championship. And a backflip could seal the deal. Going for it. Oh, no. <laughs> and the other Max D over rotates. Takes a hard hit to the chassis, goes down. He is not going to get a save. 32.15 for an incomplete run. That shows you how absolutely massive that run was. And, uh, I mean, he had a great night. He had a great night for sure. But Zach Antizana is not going to do it. Who took the freestyle win tonight? I'll tell you right now. It was Tyler Menninga in Hypershock, taking 36.9 points, the highest score of the season so far. Jackson Chalette in Piece of Scrap with 36.75 right behind him, and Bari Musauer with 36.1. We also got Jake Cranford with that 35.1. Shane Lake with 35, 34.25. We also got Trevor Goldberg with the 33.2. There is your racing champion right there. Zach Antizana with that 32.15. Northern Nightmare down at the bottom with a 23.65. And then the back of the pack, unfortunate for every single one of these trucks. I wanted to see all of them do better. We got Mohawk Warrior, Avenger, Lucas Stabilizer, and Blue Thunder. It's just not their night tonight, man, which is unfortunate. Max D split. With 23 points, Hypershock takes 22 pieces of scrap with 19 and Bad Company with 18. And all four of those trucks are Team Mayhem. That hurts Team Thunder incredibly. We even got two more right here, Zombie and Gravedigger with 16 and 14 respectively. Then we got Max D, Nitro, and Gravedigger 35. Uh, then we got Monster Mutt, Rottweiler, and Blue Thunder. Those are our highest scoring Thunder uh, Team Thunder trucks. Then it's Mohawk Warrior and Northern Nightmare down at the bottom there and at the very bottom got camel queen in bro camino blown money dev in avenger with only six points to start his season definitely a rough start and our points loser for the event is cynthia gautier in lucas stabilizer 74 points for team thunder and 131 to kick off the season for team mayhem a great start for team mayhem just a rough start for Team Thunder. But if you guys enjoyed the show tonight, we got Team Thunder versus Team Mayhem all season long. And show new shows every Saturday. So subscribe, like, let me know you liked it, guys. And uh, be sure to head over to the RWAR SRPS Instagram for all kinds of extra content, including early access to the week's racing bracket, pit party pictures, and more. Be sure to check out our sponsor, our partner, Dubby, for clean, jitterless energy powder. And uh, they got some incredible flavors. Beach and Peach is my favorite. They got a uh, Galaxy Grenade, which is a watermelon flavor that's incredible. Uh, Dragonade, which is a dragon fruit lemonade flavor. 
And uh, I mean, they got they got 10 energy flavors and two hydration flavors, and all of them are delicious in their own way. But be sure to stick around, guys. We got a new show back on the Biggest and Baddest Tour next Saturday. I will see you guys then.